and we've heard it tonight, but you can't get away from the fact that we've lost 200, and yes, Mr. Mayor, 250 million from our budget, and by 2020, 2021, another how much? Another 140, 140 million. No, but you can't get away from this fact, Dave. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. I'm sick and tired of saying it to the residents. But nevertheless, you cannot have local government without funding from national government. And until everyone in this chamber recognises that and lobbies central government, including the party opposite, so please, I'll finish with that, Mr Mayor, I'll make an appeal to the party opposite to save our parks, appeal to the government to fund this council and the rest of the councils throughout the country correctly. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Back on planet Earth, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to talk about uh, the issues of parks and coastal areas and the uh, parking charges that were introduced. And you'll forgive me if I don't give the leader of the council the, you know, wholehearted thanks for the change of his decision, as it appears the a rather fawny amendment that's, put for, that's been put forward by uh, Stuart and Phil against themselves because actually it suggests, and I think it was brought out again by Stuart, that somehow this was a plot by the officers that the administration had no idea about. It was those wicked officers that just went out there and decided they're going to introduce parking charges. What abject nonsense. I can remember the debate in this council, in this council, but yeah, a number of us, but particularly Jerry, raised the point about what was going to happen to local residents with the imposition of these charges. And I have to say, Jeanette Willington, who was all in charge of new finding new ways of raising money, uh, uh, argued against, and nearly, I would say, sneered at the residents in terms of the impact that was going to have on their livelihoods. So don't give me that somehow there's this consultation, somewhere it came from, there's a sort of consultation went on, and, and Phil had to ride in uh, to the rescue. He came up with the idea, the Labour Party refused to withdraw it when we asked them to, and therefore they are withdrawing it now, because what we told you at the time uh, actually came to be. So if you'd actually listened when we were telling you about the impacts, as you say you are a, a listening cabinet, then you would have known not to go through with it in the first place. And I have to say, again, the local election results in West Kirby, Hoylake, etc., and all over, again, made it clear, I think I did try and encourage you, Phil, at that stage, to change. They had lots of opportunities to change your mind, but you chose not to do it. And I would like to place on record, as I come to an end, I would like to place on record uh, the campaigners from Church Road, and from the local residents who have actually started this campaign, they were absolutely fantastic. And I have to say, Stuart, yeah, oh, I was happy to go and speak to people. No, you weren't. I wrote to you on behalf of the Church Road campaigners and said, we'd just like to speak to the Cabinet member. Would you come along and speak and listen to the concerns and issues that we have? I wrote to you and you said, no, you sent an officer along. Somehow, once again, it was all down to the officers. Now, you might have changed your mind when the Wallace CLP put its motion through. You might have changed your mind then. You might have changed your colours now. But don't, do not try and turn this as though somehow you, it was down to the officers, they did this wicked consultation, and we wrote in the Senate's chain. It's simply not true, and the public know it's not true. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got no quiet members. Let's hear Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got, got to make any apologies for repeating what I've said in this chamber many, many times. But the thing that struck me in the speech from uh, Councillor Whittingham was making no apology. Now, three times he came before the Business Select Committee in relation to this one to call in. Uh, the original presentation, which again, it was an eye decision, 
it was the officers who made this recommendation. Even though he's a cabinet member, he ratified it. He gets that. And people outside won't forget that. Um, the three main issues that were brought towards the Select Committee at the time of the calling was uh, in relation to our park, two parts in our park, that was the football spaces and the lady who ran the cafe next to the golf course, which was a major problem. That lady ended up in tears that evening, <coughs> explaining the problems that she would have with the implementation of them. The other one was Boyden Park and the work that was done by people who run the park and help those people with mental health, health uh, issues and the likes of that. Eastern Country Park, two, again, not one of the businesses was approached by the local authority before any of these implementations were put into place. At the time, the council went out with the country parks and certain roads in areas around there. They then did a withdrawal and said, we're not going to have any of the, uh, the roads, we're just going to have the ones in the car parks. And the reason for that was, is any revenue that was raised from the highways had to go back into the highways. It couldn't go anywhere else. The other side of that is, the money that was raised in the country parks, they can use whatever they want. And that was the crux of the whole matter. We had many uh, an issue that was brought forward. I'll give credit to Councillor Sullivan for organising a meeting with residents uh, in Eastern Country Park. There's three, three well, there's four businesses, five businesses there. Two of them were affected by the entrance to the car park. The actual entrances to their premises was the, the highway onto the car park, which is a roundabout. Not one of those people had been uh, asked for their comments. After the select committee we met, um, Mike Sullivan organised uh, with uh, one of the officers to meet with the ward councillors and those particular companies to talk about the issue. This is something that's been dragged on and on and on. At the select committee I stated, two of these particular parks, first was the and Eastern Country Park, the two of the longest cul de sacs we've got on this uh, authority. First, of all, you've got the one on the lines both sides, that makes it a bit of a no go for a lot of people. Eastern Country Park, that's at the end of Eastern Ferry Road, uh, sad to say there was a major accident there where a young man was killed the other week. We're looking forward to getting more implementation in relation to that. I can state we get the, the information and the figures. The car park of Easton, there's two car parks of Easton, one on the riverfront and a country park itself. In April and May, they made an average of £91 per day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Adrian Jones. <coughs> My comments will be fairly brief. I can't help really thinking back a little to the uh, 1980s when I was gainfully employed as a political economy lecturer. Uh, this was before the subprime prime, uh, Big Bang in America, well before the uh, crash of 2008, and I recall a very considerable number of um, uh, uh, authorities predicting that the, the world was heading, the Western world was sailing to the economy, in, into the uh, head in, in the sea of debt, and it would certainly uh, burst as it had in 1929. And they were uh, particularly impressed by one of the great events that happened uh, in egging along this, uh, this crash that was going to happen. And of course, this wasn't the subprime mortgage crisis in America which really set it off, uh, not the British Labour Party. It was the big bang of financial re uh, deregulation which Mrs. Thatcher introduced in 1983 and 86. And that was the beginning of the utter devastation of the world uh, uh, banking systems, the financial systems, and uh, the, uh, the result was predictable enough to see. I've still got my, uh, my, my own teaching notes from those days when I pointed out to the students that there were a, a number of different ways of looking at this, and Mrs. Thatcher and Hayek had their way of looking at it, but Professor Mandel, Professor Battery, Chris Princeton, and of course our own uh, Professor Ralph Miliband we're all saying that the Western economies have sailed to prosperity on the sea of debt. They believe that there is an exponential expansion, but there's not, and it's all going to crash. Don't tell me the Labour Party caused it. We all knew that it was going to happen, but not all of us had our eyes open. Councillor Leslie Rennie. 
Mr. Mayor, uh, just a very quick question, really, in as much as this because I think everything else has been said. I did raise an issue um, at our policy constituency committee where I, I let it be known that I've been contacted by one of the uh, business owners in New Brighton. In fact, um, it goes back generations, and I'm sure everybody knows who I'm talking about, and he wouldn't mind me, me mentioning that it's the uh, gentleman that owns the amusement arcade in um, New Brighton. On two occasions now, that gentleman, um, under his own finance, has consulted a solicitor and challenged this council twice on the fact that these, the imposition of parking charges, particularly in the coastal areas, namely, and I'm talking um, primarily about New Brighton and Wallasey at the moment, were totally illegal. I asked that the constituency committee, um, would, would his um, documentation be taken into account? And I have to say here and now, I don't believe for one minute that this council, run by the Labour group, have actually listened to what the people of Wirral have wanted on this. I think they're trying to hoodwink us. I'd like an answer from either the, lead, the leader of the council or our legal representative. It can be in writing later on if they haven't got it with them tonight. But um, those legal challenges, um, I know the solicitor who was commissioned to do it on, on his behalf, and the gentleman who did commission it would be more than willing to come and speak to this council about it. So I firmly believe that it was because of a legal challenge that they actually decided to do a complete new term and they realised that probably on, when they first muted it and the second time they muted it, it was totally illegal. So I would welcome um, some answers on that particular issue. Councillor Stuart Kelly. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I mean, in a way, I agree with uh, uh, Leslie Manny. Um, I, I too wondered what the real motivation behind this uh, uh, decision uh, was, because I don't believe for one moment that it's the, you know, the largesse of the leader responding to consultation and responding to people's concerns, because he certainly didn't respond to the concerns of the businesses of the Eastern uh, and the other country parks, where jobs and businesses are very clearly on the line. Councilor Davis has a budget to deliver. The charges from the coastal areas featured in his budget of only a few months ago. And he has now left himself effectively with a gap of a quarter of a million pounds of income that he was expecting from um, car parking charges at coastal areas to find. So why then knock that out? The only reason could, that, could, that that could possibly be the case is that he does not believe, as he had been told through that whole process, that he has any chance whatsoever of achieving that sort of target from the car park charges. And he only has to look at the budget monitoring report, which he will be considering with the rest of his cabinet on Monday, which very clearly states, so far as income uh, achieved uh, from car park charges currently in place, by which we mean the, um, the country parks, and I quote from that report from uh, Monday, uh, for the highways of transportation portfolio, the portfolio is currently experiencing a pressure as a result of an underachievement of car parking income. That's why he's, that's why he's rejected the new charges. He knows that they're failing in the country parks. People are not going. People are not going, uh, Council Sullivan. The businesses are struggling. Jobs are at risk. And, he's, and he knows he's not going to make the money for the coastal areas and put more jobs in. I hope that before and as soon as possible, certainly before this, preferably on Monday at his cabinet meeting, before the summer uh, recess, he also makes an announcement for the country parks. And then maybe, then maybe we will be looking at a leader of this council that is reacting to what businesses, residents and the public are saying to him about the effect these charges are having on, uh, on jobs uh, in the area. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm a little bit confused on this one because, for all the reasons why uh, the leaders decided not to go ahead with the car parking charges on the promenade, um, which are moving traffic up into the outstanding areas, um, ruining the businesses, etc., etc. And if he applies and listening to the public, correct me, um, how many was that? We did. Thirty thousand. Thank you. Thirty thousand on the on the. Uh, petitions that we put against for against the country parks. The businesses in all the country parks are suffering. Um, I think Toby Carveries have got a bag over theirs, haven't they? 
so they don't pay it. So there's an agreement with that because it was written in their business, up in up by our park. We've got businesses that are failures in Eastern Ferry. We've got a car park in Eastern Ferry that's mostly empty except when the sun's like it is. Uh, and it's pushing the cars right up to Tall Park. The Council of Mitchell uh, mentioned it before, we had a motorcyclist killed there because cars are parked on the corners of the pavements uh, and the cars can't see to get out and hit a motorcyclist and you die. So, my question is... Sorry? Point of order. Two of which... Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, can I hear Councillor Stuart Whittingham, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, there was a tragic accident in, in Eastern where someone sadly, 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 sadly lost their life. As far as I'm aware, it's still the police investigation. I think it's wrong for members to try to criticise them that uh, you've been using the car park and the car park and the judge. But I'm not sure for the police investigation. Yes, I have. I just cannot be making reference to that. I'm making reference to it because I am familiar with the police investigation and it was caused because the cars had been pushed from the car park in an eastern ferry right up Ferry Road where my, my in-laws live up to Tall Park and they're parking on the corners of Tall Drive and that caused the accident. It's as simple as that. So my question is this, Mr Mayor, my question is, considering he's overturned the ideas to put it into on the promenades for the same reasons, why is he not going to do it in the country parks? Want to roll anything there? No, no, okay. Any other speakers? Councillor Chris Blakely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I didn't intend to speak tonight, but, but I've heard a few things going on, and, and for all the uh, enlightening lecture we got from Councillor Jones, I failed to see what it has anything to do with coastal parking charges. It was just a lecture, history lecture, on what had gone before and not what is happening currently. And totally irrelevant. Before when uh, someone speaking, George shouted, the parts are being used, you're only going to come to their head. What's a parking charge? Isn't that George? Oh. Absolutely zero. <laughs> Absolutely zero. So, so, make them zero every else and all the parts will be full. Yes. Lead by example. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, it, it, it's ironic, it, it is really quite ironic that, that notes of motion for, which we're not going to debate, Labour notes of motion for, support the national action to tackle obesity. Well, Mr. Mayor, if we want to show we're tackling obesity in will, then we should be, we should be encouraging people to use our parks and open spaces, not penalising them. We should be encouraging our dog owners to be able to walk their dogs freely where they choose to do so, not seek to penalise them. Mr Mayor, the Labour Party can't have it both ways. They can't have the cake and eat it. They might have the numbers to vote for this. I hope the Leader of the Council has got more sense. I hope he has listened as he's listened, tells us he's listened to the people of Whittle over the coast of car parking charges. Well, you only got to open your ear a little bit more, Phil, and you'll hear the cries of the people who want to use our country parks. Do the right thing. Withdrawal. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, right, a number of points really uh, I wanted to come back on. Um, I think it was absolutely right that we did go out, go out to consultation on this. And the, and the argument from Councillor Green, I've never heard so, so much nonsense in my life. So basically, his line was, um, the Conservative councillors knew what was going to happen, just listen to us, don't need to ask the people. Well, I'm sorry, I'd much rather ask the people of Wirral and the residents of Wirral about these kind of proposals that rely, that rely on the party opposite. So that's point one. I make no apology for consulting. It was, it was an open and transparent process. It wasn't officers, just, we, genuinely, we genuinely, as administration, wanted to hear from the, the residents uh, affected and we wanted to look at whether there were any mitigating measures, and that's why I think it was the right thing to do to consult. I mean, you know, uh, you know, if we hadn't consulted, I would have, we would have been criticised for not doing that. So, you know, you really can't have your, your cake and eat it. So, Leslie Rennie's uh, point: No, there was no legal, there was no legal uh, basis. Well, I'm telling you, Leslie, the answer to your question is. We, the, what, the decision that we made was not driven by any legal challenge. I can give you that assurance. I, I, I certainly uh, am very clear about that. 
Um, and so consultation did provide us with the opportunity to listen to the views of residents, uh, which we did. And we, having done that, we'll do the same on the public space protection orders, Matthew, which Matthew is leading. We, we came to the conclusion that um, this, would not, this was not the right thing to do in terms of penalising um, residents, and it would just create um, uh, traffic problems in, in adjacent streets. Now, what you're trying to do, what the party opposite are trying to do tonight, Mr Mayor, is unpick our budget. That's what they're trying to do. Um, and they're not suggesting, no they are, they're not suggesting any, they're not suggesting any alternative ways of where it's <laughs> And please don't bring up the, the usual nonsense about world view because spreading world view will not save a penny because we have to spend 140,000 on advertising. Don't bring up the usual nonsense about lending to other local authorities. You lent 62 million to other local authorities with you last in power and we would be denying ourselves 300,000 a year in England. So let's not hear the usual Tory uh, scare, scaremongering. Uh, the, the, on, the, on, the country, on the country parks, um, we will not be supporting the amendment to say we, we remove the charges from country parks. I accept there are issues, I do accept there are issues uh, in terms of local businesses. My cabinet colleague, Councillor Whitting, Whitting, is meeting some of those businesses uh, next week to, to uh, see if we can resolve them. But look, you know, I, I think what the party, the two parties opposite actually failed to understand is actually we can't go on providing services free for everybody from now on, such is the funding, such is the funding. And I'll just quote, quote Tory Chairman Gary, Lord Gary Porter from the LGA, who said, and I quote, we have reached the point where councils will no longer be able to support our residents as they expect, including our most vulnerable. More and more councils are struggling to balance their books and others are considering whether they have the funding to even deliver their statutory requirements. Not a Labour spokesperson, not a Labour politician, the Tory chairman of the local association. That is the, that, that is the, uh, the issue we find ourselves with now. So, um, I'm a, you know, in an ideal world, I wouldn't want to charge anybody for anything. But I'm sorry, because of the decimation of our budget over the last 10 years, we are in this position. And you've got to stop trying to hoodwink the people of Wirral to think there's some kind of magic money tree um, because there genuinely isn't and start engaging in a serious way with alternative budget proposals not the, the, the smoke and mirrors that we see in Tory leaflets uh, week after week so um, I think this was the right thing to do this was the right decision to make we have listened to the people of Wirral I stand by that, this decision so we will be opposing the Tory amendments I ask Council to support our amendment thank you very much Councillor Jerry Ellis is second with a motion. Do you know I have up to three minutes? Sorry, what am I talking about? Thank you very much. Such, such yeah. Firstly, I must say I was very pleased with Phil on the parking yeah. in the road. So I would like to thank you seriously for I know we're often saying rude things to each other. It was a genuine, wise decision, and we're very, very pleased about it. But there are two issues tonight. One is it's got, really gone now, and that's the uh, parking roads. And the other which I'll mention in a moment is the parking in the parks. As regards the parking on the, the roads, what a wonderful example it was of public reaction. One wonderful reaction. We've got sitting in the balcony here, Mrs. Trost, Mrs. Mrs. Trost, who led the discussion, led the, the opposition, and she did a wonderful job. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to do a lot of Thank you, thank you. Phil, um, I think you made a brilliant wise decision there because you see what has happened. The week before your decision, we in Hoylake, mainly my colleague Andre, organised a, a public meeting and we had over 250 people crowded to try and get in the hall of Hoylake. A lot of them had to go away because we couldn't let them in. What a meeting, and could I congratulate the two officers that came along and listened to everything they had to say. That was Mark Smith, the senior officer, and good old um, Steve Atkins. What a great job he did taking all the notes over there. And I guess, Phil, that after our meeting on that Saturday morning, they both went back to you and said, look, Phil, you've got to change your mind on that because 
Oh, well, I'm fine, okay. Well, they were going to, but they didn't need to be. They did it without that, without that great. But really, those two officers, I would like to encourage them. They took a note of everything that was going on. They answered the questions. They were very, very, very good. And I, I was proud of those two officers. Uh, by the way, I also asked Phil to attend that meeting. And, and uh, Stuart and both said, no, we're not going to that. We'd only get heckled if we went there. What's the suggestion that we would have to say? No, I said they, they said. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't, they wouldn't get heckled, would they, by the way? By the way, So, wonderful exercise in public consultation. Yes, you did your job, Phil, and you did it well because you all got the consultation, you listened to what they had to say, and you reacted to it. I have great credit to you for that. I'm just hoping now, going over the other subject, they can do the same thing with the parks. Because there's a massive move, objection, people. I, went, I happened to go to Eastern Park the other day, and I was amazed, Carl Park, I was amazed. It was empty. And I thought, what, what's happening? What's going on? I'm a great lad's girl, they're all parking at the side roads, which we which said. And it's the same thing in Royden Park, you know. Now they're all parking in the bushes and the trees and all around. <laughs> It's sort of the where we have a lovely car park in the middle with nobody in it. So Phil, I hope you'll also now, and I do thank you for listening, but I now would like you to listen again on the subject of the uh, parks and with your lot of work. And I understand, by the way, I made some inquiry with the officers, the, the amount of income you're getting from it is m much less than the inflation that you forecast. And that is because the people aren't going there, they just park up the road and walk Time counts with us. Okay, so finish here. So thanks again, Phil, and will you now just do the same and drop book car parking pass? Thank you. Thank you. So, Councillor Dave, I'm supposed to cancel the open. All the votes is taken. Could I seek leave of council to request that there's a recorded vote? We haven't got to the end yet. Carl vote. Yeah, Councillor Gilchrist. Of number of members wish that we might stand again. First of all, Councillor David Ellison's proposal of the motion you have now have a right to reply may address the council for up to five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be very brief actually. Just listen to what was said. I liked uh, Adrian Jones's concerns about what had happened many years ago. He's always good for a history lesson and it's always delightful to listen to him. But really, we, want, we can only deal with what is happening in the world around us now. What happened a few years ago is not going to bring anything back to us. Um, one thing that does amaze me no, is no, really no, where this 250k proposed income came from. I see that as a classic piece of pure five packet budgeting because it wasn't based on reality, it couldn't have been based on any research, and yet it was forcibly put into the budget as a genuine amount that was going to be raised. I don't think that was ever on the cards and I think part of this exercise has been a realisation of that because people would just not have parked where you were hoping they would park to, to, uh, to be charged. So we come down to the problems with the park, with the, the park and open spaces. There seems to be a bit of a about face here on whether there's any income coming from it or not. Mike Sullivan seemed to think there is. I know there isn't, and some of my colleagues have witnessed this, those in the Labour, in the um, Liberal Democrat group, and my own colleagues have regularly visited the parks, as I do, and seen that nobody's there. So there's no income being raised from places where nobody's parking. So, quickly and finally, to summarise, I'm really asking you, Phil, to take note of the fact that we're talking about priorities here. We're not talking about anything else. We're talking about the fixed budget, and we're talking about where do you spend it? What do you do with it? How do you, you organise it? Now, as far as I'm concerned, as has been said, there's a motion later on talking about obesity and how to deal with it, and we should be concentrating our efforts, prioritising our efforts on trying to make it as attractive and as welcoming and as health-provoking and health-providing for visitors to come to the world and use our facilities. So that, I think, would take great precedence over continuing to publish the world view. If you ask anybody, and I've asked them, which do you want, chap? Do you want the world view, or would you rather have free parking? And they all say, free parking. I've done a, I've done a poll 
All those in favour of the motion. All those in favour of the motion moved by Councillor David Hudson as now amended, please indicate and want a card vote. Yes. Three. How many members for the card vote? Hush now, listen for your name, please. Listen for your name. Committee members? Councillor Abbey? Councillor Anderson? Just to clarify, the amendment was carried, so it's now a vote for a substantive motion as amended. Mr Mayor, Mr Mayor, clearly, clearly the vote started. Two people clearly voted against, Councillor Abbey and Councillor Anderson. There's no reason to start again. We have two votes. We start after Councillor Anderson. I think it's, I think it's better that the council's true view is reflected in the vote. So I'm going to ask the director to start again. Point of order, Councillor Stuart Kelly. There's no provision for restarting a recorded vote. Certainly at the budget meeting, just gone, there was no provision for allowing Councillor Brighouse to mistakenly cast his vote for the yeah. The entreaties of, of, of my group leader to the board solicitor at that time and the mayor at that time were ignored because the card vote was underway and votes had been cast. We cannot, Mr Mayor, have one vote for the Liberal Democrat group and another for the Labour group. You've made, you've made a ruling, Mr Mayor. I think it's out, out of order for that to be challenged. You're oh. chairing this meeting. We should get on and do the vote again. I'm just going to refer to the Director of Government in the short. Members, will you please resume your seats? Mem members, uh, a question was put to the Mayor and the Mayor has given a ruling. That ruling stands. Uh, the reasoning behind that is that uh, do understand the comments made about a previous meeting, but that was a member who uh, met, set a vote and then realised it was in error afterwards. On this occasion, there were several members who appeared to be quite confused as to what they were voting on, uh, and a clarification was requested, at which point the Mayor felt the wise thing to do was to start again. That is the Mayor's ruling and you are bound by it. Councillor Burgess Joyce, I think you should resume your seat and allow us to continue yes. with this I was trying to be helpful, Mr. Mayor. I was trying to be helpful, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, just, I just wanted to get to the see um, the legal. Quiet, please. Let's hear this question. I was just trying to be helpful, Mr. Mayor, whether the legal officer had an opinion on whether, in fact, a, a councillor who's resigned is allowed to vote. He has not resigned, sir. Mayor, the, the councillor in question uh, shared his intention to resign. Uh, the, as I am aware, the proper officer has not yet received that written resignation. Now, can we please continue with this card vote? Starting again, members, uh, this is a vote on the amended motion. Or, Councillor. <laughs> Moving on. Trying to keep quiet, the members. Oh. Members, quiet. Councillor Anderson. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Berry. <laughs> Councillor Blakely. <laughs> 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 Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Councillor Anderson. Councillor An
Councillor Bray. Against. Councillor Blightmore. For. Councillor Burgess Joyce. Against. Councillor Cannon. For. Councillor Kawubia. Against. Councillor Cleary. Against. Councillor Clements. Against. Councillor Cottier. For. Councillor Angela Davis. For. Councillor George Davis. For. Councillor Phil Davis. For. Councillor Bill Davis. For. Councillor Doughty. Councillor Elderson. Against. Councillor Ellis. Against. Councillor Fouch. For. Councillor Gardner. Against. Councillor Gilchrist. Against. Councillor Green. Against. Councillor Hackett. For. Councillor Hayes. Against. Councillor Andrew Hodson. Against. Councillor Cathy Hodson. Against. Councillor Adrian Jones. For. Councillor Chris Jones. For. Councillor Sharon Jones. For. Councillor Tony Jones. Councillor Jordan. Against. Councillor Kelly. Against. Councillor Kenny. For. Councillor Leach. For. Councillor Lewis. Against. Councillor McLaughlin. For. Councillor McManus. For. Councillor Meadon. For. Councillor Mitchell. Against. Councillor Mooney. For. Councillor Muspat. For. Councillor Patrick. For. Councillor Pogel. Against. Councillor Rennie. Against. Councillor Rowlands. Against. Councillor Tony Smith. For. Councillor C. Spriggs. For. Councillor Stapleton. For. Councillor Stewart. For. Councillor Sullivan. For. Councillor Usher. For. Councillor Walsh. For. Councillor Ward. For. Councillor Watt. Staining. Councillor Whittingham. For. Councillor Irene Williams. For. Councillor Jerry Williams. For. Councillor Steve Williams. Against. Councillor Williamson. And Councillor Wood. <laughs> Thank you, Mum. Votes in favour 36, votes against 24, abstentions 1. The motion as amended has been carried.